Does anybody, if you raise your hand, if you have any questions for Dave? Right here. Can you still play Rust in Peace? Can I still play it? Yeah. Um, I'd have to learn it. After having uh, over 100 songs, that's a lot of songs to remember. You know, it's like remembering 100 kids' names. Right here. Um, where'd you buy your first guitar at? Where'd I buy my first guitar? Um, I actually stole it. But, listen, this is what I did. I contacted the guy that I stole it from and I said, look, you know what, um, I was a drug addict and an alcoholic at the time and, and I needed to, to do the right thing in order to you know, get off of drugs and, and I need to make it right with you. I stole a guitar from you. Now, the guitar I stole from him was a piece of shit. I ended up giving him one of my Jacksons, so he made out, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, doing the right thing. It's like Phil from uh, Armored Saint. I broke his leg. He asked me if there's ever anything I could do for him. I, I, I said, you know, is there anything I can do for you? you? Just let me know. He called up and said, I want a guitar. And I'm like, are we done? <laughs> so I sent him a guitar. Dave, uh, I think one of them hardest things for an artist to do is hand off their art to give to somebody on a business sense. Mm -hmm. Do you find it hard to get, do you get involved in the business sense of it or do you find it difficult to hand it off? I <laughs> do mean, I get I, involved? I mean, like on the business side, it's, you know, you have to hand it off to make it, to be bigger than you really are yeah. on the business side. So well, there's certain people that, that you have to hand it off to. As for example, I'm not an accountant, you know, I mean, when I count, it's like, one for you, one for me, one for you, two for me, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, same thing with the legal matters. I don't consider myself to be an attorney. Now, uh, you know, I usually know when I'm in trouble enough to where I'm going to get sued or if I'm doing something where, you know, somebody will need to be sued, you know. And I, I think if you surround yourself with, with strong minds and, and people that are, are decent people, um, that, that's one of the first uh, first things that you know. I mean, you, you can hand it off to anybody. You got to make sure you give it to the right person. It's like that one uh, highlight of that Pittsburgh Steelers. I think the guy that got the football and ran the wrong way. <laughs> Was he a stealing or a Viking? Steeler or Viking? Whatever. Hey Dave, uh, what are your true feelings nowadays about Dave Allison? Oh, I think I've talked about him um, pretty nicely tonight. I think you can tell that if I hated him, I wouldn't have used his name. And, and uh, I actually forgave him when, when I, I uh, you know, I mean, it's funny. In our business, you can, you can, you can do things like, um, well, I won't get into naming any individual stuff, but you can do things and, and do really terrible stuff in our business and be forgiven for it, you know. For, for me, um, you know, I, I said that I believe in God in, in, in peace sales, but who's buying the first line? What do you mean I don't believe in God? I talk to him every day. Well, I tell people that I'm a Christian and their ass grows together. You know, I, I, I don't think that's fair. I mean, what does what I believe in have anything to do with you or, or my music? Nothing. Well, I got to walk, walk and talk the talk. So when Ellison and I went our separate ways, um, I had an opportunity to go and talk with him. Now, it was at my doing to go find him in Phoenix and to go and say, hey, I just wanted to tell you I forgive you. Now, he sued me for $18.5 million and dragged my name through the mud, and it was really devastating for me because this is one of my best little friends, you know, and, and you know, I, I wish him well. I, I, I hope that he's, uh, he's got something that he's doing in the music business right now, and, and there's not really much more to say. Hi, Dave. I have a question regarding your gear. Uh, your gear. I remember a while back I saw a video on YouTube, you using a Line 6 amp. Right, right. I want to know, uh, how long did you last uh, with Line 6? How long did I last? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got real state power. Um, well, the, the thing with line, line 6 was when I went over there, they modeled Marshall amplifiers anyway. So what they had said, I have a friend of mine um, that had a plexi, uh, an old Marshall plexi head, and it sounded amazing. And he had a, um, a, just a really killer old, old antique cabinet. And I said, you know what, can, can I... Uh, rent this to record the record, you know, and, and it was just such a pain in the butt getting this guy to let me use his stuff to record with. I figured, you know what, I'm just going to have someone copy of this. And so I rented it from him and, and the guy said Line 6 duplicated it. Now, for me, getting out on the road, um, it, it's a lot different when, when your stuff is shaking back and forth, you know, for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, and then you go and you plug in somewhere and it, it doesn't come on. 
you know, you, so you want to make sure that you've got gear that can be uh, easily replaced out on the road. You also want to make sure you've got something that's going to stand the rigors of being out on tour. You know, I, the Line 6 amps that I have sound great, but they're really finicky and, and um, they don't do well um, bouncing around the ground. Now, that has nothing to do with Line 6 amps in general, because this was a custom amp that they did for me. Um, I want to ask all the things I need to stay away from, um, you know, the evil things, sex, drugs, alcohol, or something else. What's the worst one out of all I'm going to stay away from? Stay away from? The scariest one. I don't know. It feels like a loaded question. Um, you know, for, for me, I think the, the most dangerous thing in the music business was, was people who will tell you what you want to hear. And, um, you know, I mean, you, you know who they are. They're the people that will come over and steal your drugs and help you look for them, you know. And, and it, it's the kind of people that will, you know, they'll uh, ask you to borrow money. And then when you ask them back for it, they'll, they'll never... Oh, I didn't borrow any money off you. you know, I think the most important thing is you surround yourself with, with the right people. I mean, as soon as you think you've seen the worst thing, there's something new. This last tour, it's like every time we, we turned the corner, there was something new. Then you're just like, oh my God, I think I've seen everything, and then you don't. I went into Brazil. We went up into uh, the north part of Brazil, and then we went up to Peru. And um, in order to get back into Brazil, I had to get an inoculation for... Um, yellow fever because uh, for some reason Brazil and, and those other countries up there has a problem with yellow fever. Now I got yellow fever after they gave me that shot because you know when they give you a shot you get a little bit of the virus and your body has to build up a, a, an antivirus to it and I, I got really sick. I was sick for two weeks just just dying every day. Now nobody knew it on stage because I, I'm not a whiner when it comes time to getting up on stage. You won't know anything's wrong with me on stage. I mean I may walk off if I you know if something's unsafe for me but, you know, I, I think that uh, as far as what's the most dangerous thing in the music business, it's man.